107.5 WBLS, your number one source for R&B. I think about, I was blessed to be a part of a small group to be with him mm. on his last birthday in January 15, 1968. We did not know it would be his last birthday, but the way he celebrated it is a signal to me to what it should be about now. Uh, that morning, um, around 8 o'clock, he had breakfast with his family. Mm-hmm. Uh, they came to the church in the basement around around 10 o'clock and on blue jeans, a windbreaker jacket, and a sports shirt. And uh, in the basement was some black from deep south Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, South Carolina. Uh, some Jewish allies, Al Lawrence's group from New York. Uh, some Appalachian whites, a few of them were there. Mm-hmm. Some of Chavez's group from out in southwest Texas and, and California. Some Native Americans, most of whom we had never really worked together before, but his idea was that would, that would not be in the full employment on, on the black side of town and, no, and high employment on the other side of town. We had to figure out a way to have a job or an income for everybody, a floor beneath which no one would fall. That was his argument. And we were going to come to Washington by mule train, uh, by foot, or by car, however you could get there, if ne- and if necessary, in- sit in the streets and engage in civil disobedience to force the Congress and the President to shift from the war in Vietnam to the war on poverty. He felt that money designed for healing at home was going to killing abroad, and that and that uh, by putting our bodies on the line, we could change the course of the, nation, of the national conversation. Mm-hmm. And we built something called Resurrection City, we had these tents from Washington Monument to Lincoln Monument just showing our displeasure with ignoring the issue of poverty. Even today, poverty is a weapon of mass destruction. People who, cannot, who are poor cannot get health cannot get, get, get health care. The infant mortality rate is higher. Life expectancy is shorter. And the dreams are stifled often just by the sheer weight of poverty and lack of. And so we spent that morning talking about how to fight the war on poverty. That was his agenda. At noontime, Zanona Clayton came in uh, with the cake and said, Doc, you're busy. You forgot your own birthday. And we <laughs> laughed. We cut the cake and ate uh-huh. the punch and for about an hour. Just a measured celebration. And then around 2 o'clock, Al Lawrence started doing a, a workshop on, on how they end the war in Vietnam. So he spent his own birthday at home, wow. uh, then in church, dressed casually, uh, uh, meeting with a, a multicultural group talking about how they end poverty. Uh, at church, mm. uh, putting church in action. Uh, at noontime, a measured celebration of how to end the war. So between ending the war and, uh, and, and fighting the end poverty, that was the mission. So I hope that on this birth date, that we'll focus on economic justice. Use that. The, the, the week of the 13th through 15th should be the week of the highest registration in the country. In his name, Register and vote. And now, all you who teach school who have high school seniors who are 18 or older, let them register to vote that week and then talk about Dr. King, showing what their voter registration card means. Use that week to open up a bank account. Huh. Use that week to teach the stock market game to learn the science of capital. You cannot have Wall Street on one end of Manhattan, so very wealthy, and Harlem on the other end and not understand wealth and poverty because yes. the, the contrast between the most wealthy and some of the most poor are on the same island. And therefore, the science of capital and access to capital is a big deal for us, even today. This Martin Luther King Jr. moment is brought to you by Hudson Subaru.